would like to briefly take a moment and say thank you to everyone who has continued to join us over the Florida Maquis Patreon channel. The Holy Bible teaches us, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. If you'd like to join us over there, it's only one U.S. dollar per month at the base level, and even less than that if you sign up for an entire year, and no matter what level you choose, it's fully refundable. First 90 days, no questions asked. What's the difference between YouTube and Patreon? At Patreon, we can take the gloves off. There are no censors. We have, of course, the Patreon firewall, and then we also have Vimeo that we're partnering with, and that gives us one extra layer of protection where we can speak our minds and we can take advantage of rights that we used to enjoy in this country freely. Would love to have you over there. There are hundreds of exclusive videos never before seen here on YouTube. Please, if you have the ability, would love to have you over there. You won't regret it. God bless all of you, and thank you so much. Hot time, 12 o'clock and 6 miles. What is this tack they're looking for anyway? It's some kind of weapon left by the ancients. The kind that decides who wins the war. Have Moloch's warriors been here before? I don't like the look of this. That was above and beyond. Isn't the Lambda site off world, sir? This is going to be the third in a series of videos that we are doing regarding a location in Antarctica that recently was uncovered. There are so many different artifacts at this place, I haven't gotten to all of them yet, but one of the most important is this location that looks very clearly like something from science fiction called a Stargate. Now, I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with the series, but for those of you that aren't, um, there is this thing discovered in Egypt in the movie that is a giant circular device. When activated, creates this event horizon that looks a lot like the surface of water. Another one in the TV series is discovered down in Antarctica. And it's used for traveling from place to place around the galaxy. And it's uh, not to get too complicated, but the reason I brought up this image is that it has, what I guess for lack of a better term, a blast area and a back blast area that when it activates this giant pool of water shoots out like it's going to hit you and then it um, retracts and then goes behind in a couple of different episodes there have been beings that were standing very very close and got well, I guess for lack of a better term incinerated or destroyed by being in the blast area there's also if you look closely here at the bottom, there's always a ramp up to this. This thing is always so many feet off of the ground. Never right. I guess in some cases it's a ground level, but the, for the vast majority, there's always this type of a ramp that leads up to it. Not sure why. One of the things this series got right is that this type of technology, advanced technology, will be, number one, beyond our limits to deal with when we first discover it. And even when we do, we'll have to kind of jury-rig up a uh, way to deal with it, and it's dangerous. That's where I wanted to get to. Dangerous technology. Now, I wanted to show you guys something based on the last two minutes of what I showed on the screen. I want you to look very closely at this location that I have alleged is a Stargate. 
I'm going to zoom in as close as I can. Okay, this, oh, I hit ground level. That's what happens in Google Earth Pro. If you zoom in too close, it'll bring you right down to ground level. Okay, this is about as close as we can get. Now, here is the ring right here. Here are the two supporting sides. In front of it, look at the ramp going up to, and in the back, look at the scorch. Look at the, the dark, carbonized material behind it. This looks virtually identical to the technology that was described. It's a ring, and it is... Now, here's the curious part about this. I'm going to measure it. Now, remember, we're looking at a very strange angle, so this opening might actually be bigger than what we're seeing. The opening we can see is about 9 to 10 feet, but total feet about 18 to 20. And that would be right on. That would be absolutely right on what was described here. Because for those of you that have seen um, the series... Human being stands about not quite halfway. So somewhere between 18, 20, maybe 25 feet for the size of this. Now, that having been covered, I think what we're looking at here definitely is a colony, an active colony. And let me explain why I think this is the case. Wherever you zoom in here, you see this, this gold or red. And while I do believe some of the very dark red is blood, I think what we might be seeing is evidence of fires. Now, stick with me on this. I've done the logic work on this and said, okay, if this is the case, what would we what would we expect to see if people were living here on this plane? And it's going to give me an opportunity to explain something else, too, in my description. When I say historical layer, Google historical layer, and then give a year, let me show you how that works. I'm going to have to zoom out here. Look up here in your upper left. When you download Google Earth Pro, there's a bunch of little buttons across the top left. One of them is a clock with a little arrow. And it gives you the ability to show historical imagery. Now, I had been looking at the 2012 image. This image is actually from March 25th, 2011. So this is a 2011 image here. And the reason I think this is a colony from under the ice is I want to show you what this area looked like just four months prior. You ready for this? This is the same place, December 2, 2010. Something happened. And there was this massive melt, and this colony emerged from under the ice. Let me do this again. This is March 25th, 2011. Four months prior, December 2, 2010. Pretty stark difference, don't you think? Now, let's assume that's the case. One of the things that you would have to, and also there's no evidence of this giant crash site hole over here in the previous image. See? No crash site. I honestly believe this was a very large thousand foot saucer that crashed here. See how the hole just appears? There's no way that would naturally just occur this way. Twenty ten, two thousand eleven. Now, if that were the case, 
let's go ahead and do the logic. Let's say that you crashed here and you were some type of a humanoid-like life form where bitter, freezing, cold temperatures and that blasting wind that would come down the, uh, the hillside would be something you would have to mitigate. The smartest thing you would do, the first order of business, would have to be shelter. Usually it's food and water, or water, actually water first always, but shelter would have to be number one. So this is a gentle, sloping hillside, and this gives me my second opportunity. When you see me say 2012 historical layer, 30 degree aspect, or 45 degree aspect, or 90 degree aspect, 90 degree aspect means I'm looking straight down from above. Up here in the upper right, you see where my cursor is? The upper circle, if you just click and hold the upper one, now this is about 45 degree aspect. Now what we're looking at center screen is about 45 degrees from our position. And this would of course be zero degree because we're looking directly at the horizon. So imagine this being zero degree and you're panning down. To, I'm sorry, wrong one. Now this will change your altitude. The lower one, while I'm here, I might as well show this. If you click on this, it actually doesn't change your altitude. It, pardon me. It changes your, uh, your location. It moves me directly backward. Now, and this tilts down my view. So 45 degrees, about 60 degrees. And this is about straight down 90. So that's what I'm talking about when I say that. Just wanted to cover that so that when you see the description, you know what I'm talking about. Now, this is a gentle sloping hillside upward toward our position, from our position toward the horizon. Okay? So it doesn't show it real well, but for example, let's go down to this location. You see this cave down here? The roof of this cave is at the same height as the floor of this cave. Same thing here. This roof is this floor. And this would be exactly how you would construct some type of a shelter. You dig into the hillside so that the wind coming down the hillside would blow over the roof and the area in front of your cave would be the leeward area. Does that make sense? The area that in front of you would be the leeward area. You wouldn't dig the other way so that the wind would blast right in. You wouldn't dig left, right either. You dig directly into the hillside. Now, when you go directly into the hillside like that, the area to the very back of your cave would be directly underneath the base of the cave just up the hillside from you. And you could go straight up into the floor of that next cave up. So you would have a way to literally, on something this scale, transit all the way through this colony just by going to the back of the cave, going up to the next cave, the back of that cave and up, like a ladder. And here's the best part about this, and this is why I think this is fire. Some of this, the gold and the goldish reddish. The wind blowing over the top of all of this would create a type of a vacuum. It would suck air out of the top of your particular shelter, your cave. And that would cause air from the bottom of your cave to move upward in a circular motion. So if you created heat at the base and the front, it would pull that heat into the cave. And so that you could have your fire outside, the smoke wouldn't be something you would have to deal with, or the carbon monoxide. You'd benefit from the heat, and you'd also benefit from the ventilation. You would be warm, you would be comfortable, and if you were here long enough and you were ingenious enough, you could use that blasting wind, the vacuum that it would create, to do all sorts of things mechanically inside. That's why I think they have all of these fires. And air temperature doesn't affect fire. Many people don't realize that. All you need is fuel. All you need is a fuel source and air to combust things. You can have a 
negative temperature outside of minus 50. And if you have something to burn and once it gets burning, you can feed it with fuel and oxygen, you can have a fire 800 degrees, 900 degrees. That's one of the uh, tricks that you use. You dig a hole underneath your fire and you vent it out so that the fire can pull air from underneath. And if you have a way to feed fire into, feed, pardon me, feed air into that fire, that's what I think is going on here. That this is a huge colony. They're living deep into the ice. And they have found a way to bring heat in, just like the Eskimos do. They construct their entire living quarters out of ice and snow. And they have fires inside and it doesn't melt them down. Because they're sealed and they have a way to vent. So, anyway, that's just theory. And it's an idea. And I'm sure there's a lot more out there. And as long as you are respectful, bring any idea that you would like. Just don't attack each other and don't call names. And, you know, we can have a polite discussion. I know that's kind of a rare thing for YouTube. But like I said, I have the, the brightest, most intelligent, well-informed audience on YouTube. So that should happen here if it happens anywhere. So just wanted to cover this thing, the Stargate right here. It looks like if there is something like, as described in the series, like a DHD or dial home device, it looks like it might be over here to the side. It really does, because when, and that would make sense, just for safety reasons. I always thought it was dumb that they created all the DHDs in the series directly in front and to the left and that close. If it really created that level of, of radiation, you'd want it farther away, or even maybe underground. Or build up some kind of a berm. So that type of thing wouldn't happen. Given that you could see it activate from God knows how far away. But I guess I will just leave that there and uh, leave you with this wonderful imagery from one of the best series out there. It really was. Um, way beyond Star Trek. Way, way beyond. Star Trek was just silly. Deep Space Nine was okay, but um, how they described the uh, encountering of technology, how it was used, um, the real world way that it affected real people, um, I think is testament to how long this series lasted. I forget how many, it was a dozen seasons, 13 or 14 seasons of the regular Stargate, and then they had Stargate Atlantis, and then they had Stargate Continuum, um, just because it was believable. They did things in a very, very believable way. There was no beaming anybody anywhere. I mean, unless you were, the, of course, the, the Greys. But that was another story. Anyway, like, share, subscribe, and we will see you next time. would like to briefly take a moment and say thank you to everyone who has continued to join us over the Florida Maquis Patreon channel. The Holy Bible teaches us, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. If you'd like to join us over there, it's only one U.S. dollar per month at the base level, and even less than that if you sign up for an entire year, and no matter what level you choose, it's fully refundable first 90 days, no questions asked. What's the difference between YouTube and Patreon? At Patreon, we can take the gloves off. There are no sensors. We have, of course, the Patreon firewall, and then we also have Vimeo that we're partnering with, and that gives us one extra layer of protection where we can speak our minds and we can take advantage of rights that we used to enjoy in this country freely. Would love to have you over there. There are hundreds of of exclusive videos never before seen here on YouTube. Please, if you have the ability, would love to have you over there. You won't regret it. God bless all of you and thank you so much.
Tile. 12 o'clock and 6 miles. What is this tack they're looking for anyway? It's some kind of weapon left by the ancients. The kind that decides who wins the war. Have Moloch's warriors been here before? I don't like the look of this. That was above and beyond, Chris. 